So um, we have a topic tonight. I kind of want to get want to get right into it because uh, this is going to be the first part of a series of shows that I've been thinking about doing for a while, where we take a look back at movies that are having anniversaries this year, and uh, we'll do a show about movies that are having their thirtieth anniversary, and then a couple months later we'll do the twenty fifth anniversary, and the you know, and so on and so forth. So uh, tonight we're going to travel back in time. And we're going to talk about some of the films that came out in the year 1991. They're celebrating their 30th anniversary this year. I refuse to accept that number. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Uh, So I thought, yeah, because uh, you remember when uh, we were celebrating the the 30th anniversary of uh, Back to the Future, when it was the actual day that Marty traveled back to in 2015. Yep. And that was like last week. (laughs) <laughs> and now it's yeah, six years ago facebook said over and over and over and over if you went back as far as marty did it would be 19 and i'm like shut up <laughs> <laughs> it's 19, it. 1985 <laughs> um so what we'll do first is we'll, we'll we'll talk about the movies that were the top 10 biggest money makers of uh 1991 and that may take up most of the show um okay and then after that we'll talk about some of the oscar winners that didn't make that list that are still kind of big movies for that year and then if there's any that you wanted to talk about that didn't make either one of those lists one then we'll throw those out at the end so okay. uh, i didn't know we had that kind of structure to this so yeah I well the movie. <laughs> hey i don't just come in here with no plan <laughs> <laughs> Come on. It's <laughs> when. <laughs> <laughs> I always have notes. <laughs> <laughs> so um the top the top 10 uh top grossing movies of 1991. Number 10 was Hot Shots. Which One of my favorite me. movies of all time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'll read you the, the, what the Wikipedia article says uh Hot Shots is a 1991 American comedy film. Directed by Jim Abrahams, uh, co-writer and co-director of Airplane. Mm -hmm. And it stars Charlie Sheen, Carrie Elway's, Valeria Galeno, Lloyd Bridges, John Cryer, Kevin Dunn, (laughs) Christy Swanson, and Bill Irwin. The film is primarily a parody of Top Gun with some scenes spoofing other popular films such as Nine and a Half Weeks, The Fabulous Baker Boys, Dances with Wolves, Marathon Man, Rocky, Superman, and Gone with the Wind. So it's kind of, it was kind of along the lines of the Naked Gun films that had become popular. No, over... it was kind of along the lines of Airplane, which was along the lines of the Naked Gun films. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah exactly. It was the same guys that made Airplane did Hot Shots. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and so it was it was it was one of those spoof type movies, which they they still make to this day. They're not nearly as good now as, <laughs> as they were. It's not uh, a well you can go back to very often. And even the the, the Zuckers uh, went back a little too often. I thought, you know, Airplane 2. Now, I got I got to give credit where it's due. Okay, Airplane 2. If you liked Airplane, you should watch Airplane 2 uh, just to have seen it. But it was not as good. But it does have Will, billion, billion. I was going to say Will, it has, has Will Shatner in it. I mean, come on. Yeah. But uh, Hot Shots Part Dieu is every bit as good as Hot Shots. Yeah. Yeah. I think Hot Shots, I think the second one is the one that I remember the most. I mean, I remember seeing this, but I think I remember the second one more. Is the second one the one where um, there's a scene where Charlie Sheen and Martin Sheen cross each other on the I boat? loved you in Wall Street. I loved yeah. you in Wall Street, yeah. <laughs> Hot Shots Part Due was more of the, a Rambo spoof, whereas yeah. Hot mm-hmm. Shots was the Top Gun spoof. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Ryan, the thing Ryan, that- Ryan Stiles was in Hot, Shot part, Hot Shots Part Due, and... Uh, uh, um, oh, Black Adder, Mr. Bean, um, Rowan Atkinson. Rowan Atkinson was the was the bad guy. Sorry, it's a spoiler, but whatever. <laughs> For a um, twenty, but some odd odd year, yeah year movie. But Hot Shot, Hot Shots was it was great because it was right. It was it was before you know Charlie Sheen or, or yeah before Charlie Sheen really went off the deep end. Tiger Blood, yeah. <laughs> uh, and Valeria Galeno really? was. You know, she was she was just brand new, uh, and she was she was. I, I mean, okay, yes, she's incredibly gorgeous, but she also was wonderful in the movie. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, she did, gave a great performance. Um, there's a there's a wonderful spoof of nine and a half weeks. Oh God, <laughs> yes, the love scene. Yes, uh, you know, the olive and then the bacon and the ash brown. Oh and yeah, I remember that. Uh, where they actually they had to build that that was all practical. There was no CG at this time, and so they had to make a model of her belly that could be heated up and actually cook food. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and Carrie always, this was right after the princess bride. Um, and, and I, I think Robin Hood men in tights might've been somewhere around there too. So he was also at the peak of his popularity and I loved, you know, you know, I, I and my chafing dish. <laughs> it's, it's one of those eminently quotable movies, but for some reason it, it never, got the 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 widespread acknowledgement that some of the other movies in that ilk did and i i always loved it it's it's one of those movies like you know airplane if you love the movie like i was probably the same age when i saw airplane that you were when you saw hot shots so airplane has this 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 place in my memory and in my heart but it's not something you can go back and rewatch over and over again unless you already love it right yeah Um, Hot Shots, on the other hand, I have never had a bad experience rewatching that movie. It just, it's not quite as utterly out there as Airplane was. It kind of was that same sort of humor, but toned down a bit so that it was, the situations were were funny, regardless of the fact that, you know, just weird shit was going on in the background. Yeah. Yeah. The, the thing about these spoof movies from back then, not the ones now. The ones from back then, your na- Naked Gun, Airplane, Hot Shots. Um, if you took all the sight gags out, there's still a movie there. It may not be a very good movie, <laughs> but there's still a story there. There's still a movie. The ones that they make now, you take the gags out. That's all the movie is, is gags. Yeah. Like this Not Another Teen movie that came out. I mean, it's been several years and disaster movie and epic movie and all that kind of stuff. They're ju- They only make them to have a uh, every scene is like a parody of another movie. And it's like, mm-hmm. you just scene for scene, parody, 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 parody. And then, and then end of movie. That's it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, n- number nine. Now this is a film that surprise, surprise. I've never actually seen this. This is Kate fear. It's the remake of Kate fear. Yeah. This, the, 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 the newer one, the one that had uh, De Niro in it. Yeah, De Niro this is the movie Nick that Nolte. made Juliette Lewis a star because she was the daughter in that. And that was she actually got nominated for an Oscar for it. She didn't win, but she was nominated for it as a supporting actress. And that was that weird award show where she had the cornrows in her hair. Yeah, that was messed up. But yeah. Um, <laughs> Not my but, bag, baby. <laughs> but the, well, the cool thing about this version of Kate Fear is that they used the music from the original Kate Fear in this version. And it's almost shot for shot, a remake. But, you know, De Niro being a weird ass, he was the villain in this. And Robert yeah. Mitchum was the villain in the original. And they're both scary as hell. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a departure for Scorsese. Because Scorsese is known for, like, his gangster movies and stuff like that. And uh, he doesn't make a lot of horror movies. I mean, he made this. I guess Shutter Island is considered one of his. Uh, yeah, it's more of a thriller. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I've never seen it, but uh, I have seen the original. I saw the one from the '60s, mm-hmm. but I never, I never saw the. Uh, What's the it second about? One. I've only ever heard of it. I've never. It heard is it. about okay. So the film tells the story of a convicted rapist who mostly by using his newfound knowledge of the law and its numerous loopholes seeks vengeance against a former public defender who he blames for his 14 year imprisonment because of the purposely faulty defense tactics used during his trial. Specifically, the guy is a pedophile. Yeah. So, yeah. So I have no need to ever see. (laughs) So, uh, I mean, you think De Niro is scary, a taxi driver. He's worse than this. I don't need to see either of those. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you've never seen taxi driver. Yeah. Nope. Not my dudes. It, it was on my it was on my list because I'm because I started doing that that list of the hundred films that you have to see before you die that IMDb mm. came out with, and that's on the list. So I, I, I saw it. Then. 
I am yeah. a devout escapist. I am an unapologetic escapist. Yeah. <laughs> I feel bad enough in real life without going to the movies to be made to feel bad. <laughs> in fact, there were times yeah. when when uh, the BSG reboot was was on, mm-hmm. and you know I didn't miss an episode of that. But there were t- I would turn to my wife and go, you know what? If this was like a movie of the week, I would not be watching this. If it wasn't on a spaceship, I would not want to see this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm the weirdo that st- stuff like that in movies doesn't make me feel bad because I'm I I, I separate. I, I know it's a movie, mm-hmm. you know. That's why uh, well, I'll watch a horror movie with my wife. Though something gross will happen, that doesn't gross you out. No, it's corn syrup. <laughs> you know, it's not really blood. <laughs> you know, gore doesn't bother me. It's the concepts yeah. that get me. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't need to. It doesn't need to be good special effects for it to not mess me up for weeks. That's why I stay away from yeah you know, horror movies. <laughs> Um, so number eight is the Adams family. Yay, which I love that movie. And that's the that's the uh I think the first one out of this list that I remember seeing in the theater. Because I was I was I turned 14 in 91. So Mm -hmm. I didn't go to the movies a whole lot because when I did go, it was because my parents took me. So (laughs) well, I didn't live in a town that just had a movie theater that you could just walk to, you know. I lived out in the country, so if if going to the theater was a a, a, a thing, you know. Mm-hmm. But well, let, um, me, let, let me just to put put my 1991 experience in perspective. That was the most of 1991 I spent in Biloxi, Mississippi, at Keesler Air Force Base in tech school, learning how to fix avionics and airplanes. So when you said 1991, I was like, oh, geez, I don't think I saw anything in, in that year. And then I got went through the list and I saw a lot more than I thought I did. But during that year, I did not, I, you know, I didn't watch a lot of TV. I only saw a few movies. So I was in I was high school. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was uh, 17 going on 18 in 91. So. Yeah, that's what I was telling Jim before we started is like the, I saw several of these in the theater. The ones that I didn't, it was back in the day when you could go to the video store and put your name on a waiting list for a movie that hasn't come out on video yet. And when it comes out on video, they'll get a couple of copies and they'll start working their way through the list. So, Um, but the Adams family, they've got it listed as a supernatural black comedy. Now I've always considered the Adams family to really be a kid's movie. Mm. I mean, maybe it's just because I was a kid when I saw it. No, it's not really. I mean, the, some of the humor in it is pretty dark. So, um, but and it's and Angelica and it, Houston. That's my oh, second she was favorite hot. role she ever played. Yeah, she was. She was pretty hot in that. <laughs> and most people don't realize that the, this movie was based on the cartoon. It wasn't. A lot of people no. automatically assume it was based on the TV show. Yeah, no, it was. But it was based on the cartoon and the comic strip. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. And the head aspects of the uh, the '60s TV series. Yeah, and that bit. is also a lot of great quotes in it. Don't torture yourself, Gomez. That's my job. <laughs> Stuff like that. And also, gave with Christina Ricci. That was her. Yeah, debut. that was one of her very first. Well, no, it wasn't her yeah. debut. Mermaids was her debut. Yeah, Mermaids yeah. was her first one. Yeah, we were watching just before we started recording. Uh, my wife is in there watching Grey's Anatomy, and tonight, for some reason, Grey's Anatomy is just showing two old episodes. They're not showing a new one, but they're showing episodes from years ago mm-hmm. and i forgot that christina ricci used to be on that show and she was on there and mm-hmm. my wife my wife said what do i know her from <laughs> oh, no. well, i mean a lot of stuff but wednesday adams for <laughs> for one thing but um uh yeah and, and and christopher lloyd has always been one of my favorites and i think this is one of the ones that i love him in because he's almost unrecognizable yeah, With he bald totally head disappeared into the role. It was, yeah, yeah, and he used to do that a lot. I mean, the of course, the first thing I ever saw him in was Back to the Future, but I was like not even ten years old when that movie came out. Ah, uh, see, for me, it um, was it was Star Trek Three. Oh, was first Reverend on Jim there. on Taxi was where I. Oh, there. Oh, yeah. True. Well, I mean, I've <laughs> seen all I've seen all those things, but not in that order. <laughs> um, and then of course, uh, uh, the yellow light. I, I remember going to see Who Framed Roger Rabbit. It came out in eighty seven. So true. I was never mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was ten years old when that came out. And I did not know that was him when I saw the movie. Yeah. And I was obsessed with that movie. Um, I was a 
I was a, a film buff from back then. So the whole idea of mixing real people with cartoons just fascinated me. So I was buying all these magazines at the grocery store where behind the scenes of Roger Rabbit. And I saw it was Christopher Lloyd. And I said, that's the same guy that played on Back to the Future. It doesn't even look like him. But yeah, he did that a lot. He would he would get made up to do something and he was just let himself yeah. just be absorbed absorbed into that role. Yeah. And Raul Julia, oh, he is missed. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, didn't Carol Kane play Grandma in the second or, one? In the second one, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing, Angelica Houston, they did this thing where they just they shined a light just on her eyes, yep. and just followed her. Of course, they used to do the same thing with Captain Kirk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but they would just <laughs> follow her around everywhere she went. the The light stayed on her eyes, and it was a, that. And the dress in the first movie was so tight she could barely walk in it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, if I ever met Angelica Houston, I would do, I would do to her, Jen, what you did to Ron Perlman, because I liked her better in Ice Pirates than anything else she was ever in. That's right. <laughs> they were even a couple in Ice Pirates. That's even weirder. Okay. <laughs> Not that I don't love her in everything I've seen her in, but Ice Pirates was the the first time I saw her. In, Same year. And... Yeah. Um, back to spoof movies. Number seven is The Naked Gun Two and a Half: The Smell of Fear. Is that the one with Ricardo Montalban? No, that, he, that was the first one. That was the first one. Okay. The second one, one, I believe, was Robert Guillaume. Or, or, or no, oh, it was, um, oh, shoot. Yeah, okay. Robert, Robert, Robert Goulet. Robert Goulet. 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 Robert Goulet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Robert <laughs> yeah, Guillaume was from Benson. So I, I actually his met name, Robert Goulet. His name can't come up without, uh, without going Goulet. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oh, you met him? Really? Yeah. I, uh, he he played, I uh, when I was in grad school, I worked at the, the university center, which had, uh, one of the things about working in South Florida is you get a lot of stars who are kind of at the end of their careers. You want to have something of a working vacation. Mm-hmm. And so they'll do like a tour and they'll, they'll play South, they'll, they'll play Florida. Mm-hmm. And I worked in the university center and I ran a uh, spotlight, follow spotlight and also, you know, worked setting up lights and, and stuff. And one of the people that came through was Robert Goulet. And since I was his follow spot operator, I got to meet him and talk to him, ask him what do you, you know, what does he want from the follow spot and stuff. And he was, he was, I wouldn't say he was very nice, but he was extremely professional. Yeah. You know, I met, I met a lot, you know, we had a lot of people come through who, you know, some were utterly Nobody was, nobody was, was rotten, Mm -hmm. but you know, most of them, you know, a lot of times they were just either detached or busy or focused on other stuff. You know, I've, I've told this story a a dozen times because I, I love to tell this story. I met James Darren, uh, Vic, Mm -hmm. Vic Fontaine from, from DS9. And he, he, I said, hello, Mr. Darren. He's like, no, no, no. Call me Jimmy. And I was like, yes, (laughs) there was no reason to do that. You know, (laughs) there was absolutely no reason for him to do that other than just being nice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. you know, Kathy Griffin was awesome. Uh, uh, um, she was touring with, um, Eddie Griffin comedian. They were, they were both, it was like the two Griffins. I know Griffin? who Kathy Griffin is. I don't anyway, know. Um, I liked her a lot because she brought out a stool sat down and didn't move for two hours. So I could lock off my spotlight and enjoy her show. Eddie yeah. Griffin, I'm gonna look him up. He's 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 an African American comedian who is just like a ping pong ball in a dryer. I was like, Jesus Christ, I'm exhausted by the time that he was done. Um, but you know, we got a lot of that that kind. Of, you know, it was a it was a college uh, crowd, and Goulet was just he was just very cool and very professional. And uh, he he did you know he did his show. He came out and you know he had a, a magnificent singing voice. And it was a couple of years before he passed away. Um, but you know, of course, he sang this. He sang songs from Camelot, which is what everybody wanted to see. Because you know, uh, uh, even though it's a college town, Boca Raton, Florida, is you know, all of that. That's where all of the people that grew up watching Goulet went to retire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's his crowd. <laughs> Mandy Patinkin was awesome. He did like a three-hour show. Oh, I would love to he meet almost him. Almost killed me because he, came, you know, he came out and we were like, we picked, we were spotlights on him from the minute he comes out, mm-hmm. and then he didn't stop moving for an hour and a half, and then it was intermission, and then he came back out and did another hour and a half, <laughs> and the audience loved it, and I was exhausted by it. I'm <laughs> it was, sure. 
It reminds yeah. me of the time I met uh, Henry Winkler, and it was at an event where he's. It was one of those car show, you know, you know, the classic car shows that go from town to town. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had taken my kids, and he was signing autographs. Of course, I mean, you have to pay ten dollars for the picture to get him to. Mm-hmm. And if you want to take your picture with him, it's like thirty bucks. I wasn't doing yeah. that, mm-hmm. but um, so he was there, and Donnie Most was there. Mm-hmm. I felt bad because nobody was in Donnie's line, <laughs> but unless, unless people wanted to get their picture taken with both of them, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, but we got up there and, um, I bought a picture to get him to sign it and everything. And the kids didn't have any idea who he was, but I was like, he's been in stuff that you've seen. He was in Drake and Josh. He was in holes, you know? Oh yeah. I remember him now. And, uh, and then he pulls the, he pulls this trick quarter out. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Click, you know, yeah. where he bite, say he bites the quarter. So he does that mm-hmm. trick for the kids and everything. And they, they, they're like, Oh, cool. But uh, anyway, the naked gun. So the, the, <laughs> the thing about the naked gun movies is that they were based on this TV show, police squad that came on in the, the eighties, I guess the early eighties. And it was like a regular, it looked like a regular cop show. All the actors took their role. They played their roles serious, but there was all these sack gags happening in the background mostly. Um, and then they would say off the wall stuff sometimes, but they would deliver the line as if it was serious, you know. Well, it was it was the same people that did Airplane. It was that yeah. same yeah. production company. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but the show did not do well. And I think I've I've said this before. The show didn't do well. It didn't last very long, and it was because. It looked like a regular cop show. It had the name of a show that seemed police squad just seems like it's, it's a cop show. And then people would watch it and they didn't, what in the hell is this? Yeah. And, uh, and it just didn't click with the audience. But then when they put out the movie, of course, you've got trailers. People know what to expect when they go to the theater It's called the naked gun, you know? And, uh, and so the, the, the films did a lot better. I mean, they made three of them and then Leslie Nielsen did this until he died. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite things about the the Naked Gun TV show was they would always do the the classic freeze frame at the end. Yeah, yeah. they wouldn't freeze. It was just everybody had to stand still. Yeah. <laughs> and then they start looking around like, are we, "Can we move you? Can we move you?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and and people, a lot of people don't realize in the uh, if you watch the first one, the opening credits where the With police the light, light <laughs> is. Is driving around and going office. through buildings and stuff. <laughs> That's what they did in the opening to the, the TV show. show. Yeah. That was from the show, yeah. Uh, now, of course, there's there's also the the problematic uh, Nordberg issue. Oh yeah, well we didn't know that back then. We didn't know that we so comes in and was a murderer yet. <laughs> so, well, I guess he wasn't a murderer yet. Oh, he, you, oh, OJ yeah, Simpson. Simpson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. OJ. <laughs> yeah, he was he was he in the first. Nordberg. He was in both of them. He was in the first. He was in all three, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Was he in the third one? I thought the third one didn't come out until he was. Wasn't he already on trial or had been uh, on trial? No, no, it was long after. Okay. And Reggie Jack, I remember Reggie Jackson. Was it? Was that he was the, first the first one? one. Where he was, yeah, because yeah. they were at the baseball field in the first one. Because I think I don't remember much of the plots. I just kind of remember the bits gags. And the the second one was the one that Priscilla Presley was in, and he they fell oh, in love. She was in all three. She was in all three. Yeah, was. Well, I think the I think the second one was the one that had the gag of uh, the the sex scene with the full body condom. That was number one. Was that the first one? Okay, I get them mixed up. <laughs> I, too. Just, I remember okay. all three; they're ingrained in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I remember specifically the second one was where Priscilla Presley had red hair and she looked awful. Was she the one in Mars Attacks? No, she. I don't no. think she was in Mars Attacks. No, that was somebody else. That was another Presley. There, there's only a dozen of them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm looking up the, f- okay. So the third one was called the naked gun 33, 33 and a third, and the yeah. final insult. It came out in 94. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the trial okay. was in 95. Okay. 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 All right. So the next one, number six is JFK. Never seen are it all. Wait, are, you, are you going, you're going lowest Backwards. to highest. Right? I'm, I'm going highest to lowest. Our lowest, yeah. Not started yeah. at 10 going to number one. Gotcha. Um, so the, the only thing I know JFK. about JFK is from the critic we're back and to the left. <laughs> back and to the left. Yeah, I, I never watched I'm it. I'm sorry. I, I, did, I did watch it, but I watched it like 
the year after it came out. So it's been so long ago that I don't remember. I remember that it's really long. Yeah, because all of our stone movies are always that way. Yeah, and I but I don't remember a ton. I just about remember it. Kevin Costner was in it. That's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's we'll I know it's again. about it's about the conspiracy <laughs> around the Kennedy assassination and everybody was in it. <laughs> uh I, but I prefer that, the X Files version of it. Mm, yeah. Or the Quantum Leap two episodes that they did of it. Yeah, that was now that was great. Uh, I liked the when he leaped in Lee Harvey Oswald, and then there's also uh, the show that came on Hulu a few years ago called Eleven Twenty Two Sixty Three. If you've never yeah. seen that, that's a really good mm -hmm. show. It's um it's based on a Stephen King novel where this yeah. guy goes back in time and and he tries to stop it, and you know he actually when he when he goes back in time he gets there a couple of years before the assassination and he has to actually live out so he he he's involved in a lot of the preamble stuff to the actual assassination before it yeah. actually happens mm -hmm. and stuff so uh number 5 the silence of the lambs now this is I believe this won Best Picture that year. Yes, it did. At the Academy Awards. And they say it's the only quote-unquote horror film that's ever won Best Picture. I don't consider it a horror film. I consider it a thriller. Yeah, it's a psychological thriller. Um, and the thing about that movie, I'm going to tell you guys the story of the first time that I saw it in a second. But um, the thing about those books, those, these Thomas Harris novels, I don't know if you guys have ever read any of the Thomas Harris novels about yeah. Hannibal Lecter. Mm -hmm. Hannibal Lecter is not as big of a character in those books as they make him in these in the in the movies. Nope. Um, Anthony Hopkins is just such a presence that they want to put him in more. But Silence of the Lambs is not even the first in that nope. series. The first in the series was Red Dragon. Yep. And he wasn't in. He was barely in that book. He was only in like two scenes. But when they made the they made they actually made that movie twice. They made yeah. Man they made Manhunter, Man which Hunter. I love. Manhunter Brian it's one of Cox my favorite. Played him. Yeah, Brian Cox yeah. played Man one of my favorite Man. movies is Manhunter. And then the the second time they made it had Ed Ed Norton, and they brought Anthony Hopkins back, and they added a whole bunch of scenes for so that Anthony Hopkins could have more to do. You know. Yeah. And then, of course, they had Thomas Harris write another novel just so they can make another movie. Yeah, Hannibal. <laughs> Hannibal. That uh, movie was awful. Yeah. Uh, the TV series was not bad. It was. No, it, I, I wish they had creepy. the time to actually finish it because it got canceled. But. Yeah, it did. It did. But um, so the first time that I saw this movie, I went in the ninth grade. I would have been 14. Uh, I went on a school trip to Cherokee, North Carolina. Um, we visited the Indian reservation there and spent two or three days going to the Smoky Mountains and going to museums and think, th you know, kinds of educational things like that. And we took like one, uh, a couple of these big Greyhound buses, right? And um, on the way back, they've got these TVs mounted in the ceiling and the bus driver can put a movie in and everybody can watch it so he put silence of the lambs in for a bunch of 14 and 15 year olds to watch <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and that's the first time that i saw it now i didn't i didn't hear most of it because i was on a bus full of kids but uh i i saw enough you know <laughs> uh the show the tv show monk is one of my favorite shows and the guy oh, that yeah, plays the, the, the head Buffalo detective Bill is on it. <laughs> that's Buffalo Bill. I can't remember his name now, but he, uh, uh, yeah, Buffalo Bill plays Stottlemyer in uh, in Monk. <laughs> yeah, and he's nigh unrecognizable compared to how he was in the movie. You're like, because he has a mustache. He's like, is that him? Yeah, he's okay. on something right now. There's something that he's on now. I can't remember what it is now. But anyway, next on the list, number four is Hook. Which I didn't know that came out in 91. I thought it came out in 89. It's crazy. Oh, no, no. Yeah, it came out early 90s. I remember seeing this when I was a kid. Um, this is the one with uh, Dustin Hoffman as Captain Cook. Captain mm -hmm. Hook, excuse me. Captain Cook. 
and uh robin williams as an adult peter pan that has to learn to be a boy again yeah (laughs) julia roberts was tinkerbell and yeah now i I... need to i don't understand how this movie could have come out in 1991 because i saw it in england was it late in 91 yeah let me pull it up let me pull it up i'll tell you it was pretty late it came out yeah December, okay. December eleventh. Um, all right, that 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 tracks then, because I I saw it and it was the first. Uh, okay, when, again, I was I was in the Air Force at the time, and we went on deployment to uh, our base, the base we worked out of in England, RAF Lakenheath. Um, and at the time, my best friend Carol uh, had met and married an Englishman and moved over there, and I hadn't seen her for years. So whenever I had a few days off, I would go up to uh, Dartford and go see her. And we went and saw Hook. And the reason it sticks in my mind, eh, uh, because I'll I'll be, I'll be frank. I don't like this movie. I think it's boring AF. Um, (laughs) It, I mean, it's, 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 it's certainly very well acted and it's, you know, bangerang and bad form. And, you know, it's very quotable, but God damn it drags. (laughs) But anyway, um, I remember I remember it so fond. I remember it so clearly because it was the first time I was ever able to get a beer at a movie theater. (laughs) (laughs) I can see, I can see it being, being slow. If you're older, when you said that, I mean, if you're a kid and you go see it, it's very colorful. Um, The action, the action parts really stick in my mind. I know it's probably not, it doesn't have as much action as I'm remembering, but, uh, I remember it being really good. I have not seen it in years. I saw it several times because it's one of those movies that, you know, once it comes out, one of the teachers at your school gets a copy of it. They're going to show it 50 times, you know? Yeah. I was 27, 26 or 27. See, I I can understand that. Yeah. Yeah. I was 18 when it came out. I still remember distinctly two things about the movie. A, Rufio was cute as F. <laughs> I love Rufio. I was like, I'm too old to be having a crush Rufio. on this kid, but he's so cute. And number two, the daughter, worst actress I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> the, kid, the girl who played the daughter. I was like, she's awful. But yeah, Sharon I don't like watched the- it recently. Really? And she loved it. Okay. See, uh, I don't like the movie either. But so. I, I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't, I didn't. She, I sat through a bit of it and then we it was breakfast time or something and then she watched the rest of it on her own and i didn't mind because i mean it's cute it's not a bad movie i just i just it just yeah. i think Dustin Hoffman has Hoffman. never been a favorite of mine oh Dustin and Hoffman, so, and, yeah Dustin, Dustin Hoffman, Hoffman did a fantastic what? job as captain hook the remaking hook or peter pan, peter pan. again yeah well they've done different I have, so many versions of peter pan hmm. I have heard that, yeah. I, 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 they're, it's the thing where Disney is remaking all of their cartoons as live oh, action. Okay, so it's yeah. going to be like the Disney version of Peter Pan, but like yeah, action. but is it going to have they'll, all of the derogatory oh, racism? No, I'm <laughs> I'm sure they'll leave the they'll leave the Indians out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear? Oh, I left the speakers on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, get, like, I don't. I don't have an echo. I'm going to take the derogatory. They're, they're not going to leave the derogatory. And my wife just went, "No." I went, "Oh shit!" You can hear. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I really liked the idea of this grown-up Peter Pan having to like get his memory back. Like he can't. Yeah, he doesn't remember yeah. being and Peter Pan. Really, at all. only Robin Williams could have pulled that part off. Yeah. seriously because he I was mean, a man child at the anyway yeah the, the the scene where the where the little girl looks and goes oh there you are in there peter that just tears your heart your heart that out. was that, a little that, boy but yeah a little boy whatever <laughs> oh yeah um, yeah but still you know the the idea of it i love i just found the execution to be really really slow and boring okay um they've got, uh, and, they've got and, a... not anthony hopkins um tony the guy that played Smee, who was in Roger Rabbit, Bob Hoskins. Um, That's Bob, Bob Hoskins. Hoskins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he was he, it, it's such a shame he's gone because he was such an amazing talent. Yeah, he did a great job in Super Mario Brothers. Don't go there. <laughs> Don't go there. 
they've got a ride or they had a ride at Disney World that it was a it was a Peter Pan ride and it was one of the slow rides that you go do after you've done the the roller coaster 15 times you know and you yeah. need to take a break and um they put you in this little cart and uh and you just kind of go through some scenes there's like all these little scenes set up uh and they tell you the story of the movie and it takes about 10 minutes you know but there's one part where you go through and they've cre- they've made this miniature of london and it's dark in there and they're all lit up like it's at night and mm-hmm. there's uh and the the way the the cart kind of banks a little bit so you're kind of leaning over like you're like you're flying over london and it really does look like you're flying over london it's awesome cool <clears throat> all right i wrote it years ago and it sounds vaguely familiar. It may not even be there now. Disney's oh, kind of I, I revamped. guarantee it's not there anymore. Yeah, they've revamped everything when they started bringing in Star Wars and Marvel and all that kind of stuff. So, um, Beauty and the Beast, the Disney version of Beauty and the Beast. My favorite Disney movie of all time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think I saw this in theater, but I did see it uh, several times on video because. Disney movies when you're a kid. I mean, that's that's whatever that's what everybody everybody puts on for you. <laughs> you know? oh. so, so yeah, uh, Beauty and the Beast is uh, it, it. It was kind of like this renaissance of Disney movies in the nineties, yeah, in the late eighties. It started with Little Mermaid, and then Aladdin, yeah. uh, Beauty and the Beast, and then Aladdin, and all the way through the nineties, and kind of ended with. I think it was Treasure Planet was the last one that they made, which for is a, a long such time. an underrated film. It's actually I like really that one. good. Oh yeah, I like, Treasure, I like Planet. Treasure Planet. But yeah, this one we got Aladdin, we got Hercules, we got you know all these all these uh, Dis- what's now Disney classics. But mm-hmm. it's like every year they came out with one. Yep. Um, but Beauty and the Beast, I like the and I like the live action one. Yeah, I actually like the live action one better because it explains stuff that was omitted from the cartoon. Like, why did the villagers not realize that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. We went to uh, when we went to see the the live action version. We went to like a, it was a special showing that was like a sing along showing. So they okay. put the words to the songs came up while they were singing. The words to the songs came up on the screen and the little bouncing ball went across oh, so that you could sing along with it if you wanted to. I had no interest in doing that, but <laughs> there were several children in the audience that did. Um, number two on the list is Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. So number Kevin Costner is making this list twice. Yeah, that was number two because you see number well, when you see number one, you'll understand why it was number. It two. made three. <laughs> it made three hundred and ninety million there were dollars. So many better movies that worldwide year than that one. And you know, if you think about it, three hundred ninety million dollars in the nineties, and now they come out with like Avengers, and they say, "Yeah, it's a billion dollar movie," but that's not really that impressive because now it costs fifteen dollars to go to a movie. Of course, it's going to yeah. make a billion dollars. Yeah, it was only like <laughs> five bucks back then, or something. It's just yeah. It was. I actually, I actually <sighs> researched this a little bit. Um, Nineteen ninety one, the average movie ticket price was four dollars and twenty cents. And if you went to the matinee, it was two and a quarter. Yeah, Yeah. and (laughs) minimum wage was four dollars and twenty five cents an hour. So it cost Mm -hmm. less than one hour's wages to go see a movie. Now, the minimum wage is seven twenty five, and the average movie price is nine fifty. So. Yeah, uh, an hour's wages won't even buy you a movie ticket. <laughs> oh, see, with Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, there are three things that everyone remembers about that movie: a, Kevin Costner's shitty accent. <laughs> I mean, uh, he didn't even point. he didn't even use an accent. Well, actually, he just he, he did he tried he tried so bad the producers went just don't yeah, <laughs> yeah. just talk normal. <laughs> Two, Alan Rickman being awesome, and yeah, and and uh, Elizabeth Mary Elizabeth Mash Antonio, she was great, and she actually did a British accent. And three, that Brian Adams song was everywhere. <laughs> my dad, uh, when my dad and my stepmom got married, that w- that they played that song at their wedding. Uh, of course they did. Yeah, I mean, they played that song at every wedding in the nineties. I think yeah. the best part of that movie, Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman was great. Yeah. yeah. Alan Rickman, Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio, and. 
you I'm warning you now, the F bomb's coming because one of my favorite lines in any movie ever was Christian Slater. Me, he cleared it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, Christian Slater's underrated. He uh yeah, he is. Yeah. people like to like to make fun of Christian Slater, but I think Christian yeah, Slater's. Yeah, but everyone just, loves him in Heather's. Just fine. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, what was the what was the was it Pirate Radio? What was the one where you uh pump up the volume? That's it. Yeah, I like that. Pirate Radio was a great movie. I, um, I didn't remember him being in it. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no. It's Pump Up the Volume, which they need to remake for uh to be a podcasting movie now. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, he's been he's been in he's been in um Dr. Robot recently and he's amazing in it. So. Well, even Christian Slater did a British accent. Yeah, yeah. The doctor couldn't. <laughs> and that's always been my problem with the movie. It's a great movie, except for the lead. And when the lead is your weak link, you got a problem. <laughs> yeah, but he was the name at the, especially at the time, because this yeah. is right around the same time as Dances with Wolves yeah, and, and all I that. So, uh, I was yeah, just, I, I remember I was looking so forward to this movie, and then it came out, and it was it was ninety nine percent great. And then Costner, and it was just like, <laughs> yeah. But everyone started watching it specifically for Alan Rickman and, and all his one liners because he's the best I part of the film. Cancel Christmas. Hey, if I if <laughs> I see a movie, your heart out with a spoon. Yeah, I don't know. If I see any movie that's ninety nine percent great, that's a plus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, uh, number one is Terminator Two: Judgment Day. That yep. that was a given. <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course, uh, the, the sequel to Terminator and it was, so Terminator came out in like 84, right? So it had oh, been, yeah, yeah. 80, it had 80, been a long 80, time. Yeah. I think, yeah. It had been a long time since the, uh, the first one had come out. No. Yeah. 84. It says it's the sequel to the 84 film Terminator. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just, it's, it's, it's. I've had arguments with people before. It's just such a it's a better movie than Terminator, but no, it it's, isn't. Yeah, yes, it, it is. is. Yes, it, it is. is. Yes, it is. It's a, it's a bigger movie. It had a it's bigger a, budget, but I don't think it's a better movie. It's a different movie. I mean, it's yeah. a different kind of movie. It's not. It, it's like saying that Aliens is better than Alien. There, it and 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 the Cameron, you know, it's Cameron in both both instances where you have the original movie is in a certain genre. And then the sequel, Cameron came along and turned the sequel into an action film. So I, I and I will, I, I'll die on this hill. I think Terminator is a great movie almost because he had no money to make it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Terminator is a great movie. Terminator T2 is a great movie. Is, a, is an excellent movie. It's one of my favorites, but I will, I will disagree to my dying breath. That is a better film than than Terminator. Mm, okay. It's well, a bigger film. It's a more expensive film. It's a maybe a, a better made film, but I I won't I disagree that it's a better movie. I can't well, really I can't yeah. really compare them because they're so different. But if I had to choose between the two of which one I want to watch again, I'm going to pick Terminator Two. Right. <laughs> I, I I would go the other way around. I prefer Terminator. Yeah. Okay. Well, what the great thing about it is that the effects still hold up to this day. I mean, most of the effects are still really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you know, Cameron. For all of my issues with him, as you know, kind of being the you know the the second biggest dick in movie making history since Stanley Kubrick. Um. <laughs> He certainly is right up there pushing the bleeding edge of special effects. Mm -hmm. He always has been. You know, look at The Abyss, look at T2, look at uh, uh, Titanic. Uh, you know, he's always been one to embrace the visual effects and, and what you could do with it. Um, and even even Terminator for, for the time, you know, you look at it and, you know, some of that, that rear projection blue screen stuff is pretty, pretty terrible, but for the time it was really remarkable mm -hmm. yeah um, but he's also from all reports an absolute asshole to work for <laughs> yeah and according to Lim linda hamilton to be married to as well <laughs> yeah and we'll gail ann heard too who was his first wife <laughs> yeah, yeah he's had three wives four four wives four i think he's had four wives at this point Another one being yeah. Catherine Bigelow, which, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, Terminator 2 also has the distinction of being 
like this elevated sequel and then everything after that <laughs> well not okay great. So actually the tv show was not bad oh yeah the tv shows and and i just noticed it's on hulu is it I just noticed we, the other day it's on hulu yeah we talked about that on a recent did, was it we talked about was it one of my shows or one of one? Uh, I don't remember. It comes up often. Stero- oh, we were talking. About, oh, it was it was it was my Mother's Day live show that I did with Shane and, and Scott. Yeah. Um, the Sarah Connor Chronicles were awesome, but they were totally, uh, you know, gutted by the writer strike that year. Yeah. 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 Episode nine was the season finale, and then because they had only they only had nine episodes written before you know done before the writer strike. And then when they came back, they just they never could get that momentum back, and it just nope. it just wasn't the same show afterwards. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But we loved it. We but we were just hanging on every episode, and you know, granted, I love Summer Glau, uh, you know, Firefly and and uh, and uh, uh, Knights of Badass. Them, if you've never seen it, check that movie out. It's terrible, but it's so much fun. Oh yeah, it, <laughs> it's got Summer Glau and Peter Dinklage. And, yeah, but it's meant know, to be terrible. It's, it's, yeah, it, it, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> it, it doesn't pretend to be anything other than what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, the only yeah. thing I don't like about uh, Terminator 2 is Edward Furlong is not an awful actor, but his voice in this movie was just so annoying. And it's because his voice changed while they were making the movie. They had to go yeah. back and redub some of his lines. And you know, but the way he delivers some of his lines is like, no fable, what you make for yourself. Like, shut up, kid. 14, 12, 14. He was, well, okay, the actor's no, he 14, was older. the character's supposed to be 12. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, the, and the third one, they, they retconned that and made him like 14, 15 for yeah. some reason. The, the third one, okay. I didn't hate as much as the rest of the world seems to, but it's certainly... And, it the was ending good was movie. good. The ending was good. Yeah, and then they just dropped it. It 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 made it had a great setup that they never delivered on. Mm. Yeah, I didn't mind. I didn't mind the third one. The third one was okay. Uh, it's when they got into Terminator Salvation and they completely abandoned the whole concept of Terminator movies are chase movies. Terminator movies are people being chased by Terminators, and mm-hmm. in Terminator Salvation. They abandoned that and tried to do something completely different, and it didn't work. Well, um, which is why guy, Terminator, uh, uh, well, the Sarah Connor Chronicles had a lot of those chase elements to it. Mm-hmm. And then when they did Genesis, it had it was more of a chase oh, movie. Oh. Genesis, I think, was the worst of the bunch. It was, but it, you know, in in Salvation, I can't remember the the actor that was not. The whole John Connor storyline was was well. That was terrible. tacked on. That actually wasn't yeah. even supposed to be on. The, in the, the, the other guy who was in he was in like everything that year, and I can't remember his Sam, name. Sam uh, Waterson. No, Water- not Waterson. <laughs> no, not Waterson. Sam. That's Worthington. the guy from Law and Order. Worthington. Yeah, because he was yeah. he was in Avatar too. He was in yeah. Clash um, of the Titans too. His uh. his part his storyline I thought was great. Yeah, that was and meant to be the movie. It was supposed that? to be it was supposed to be that character with John Connor kind of in the background, but then. Some suit politics like, no, happened. Gonna, yeah, <laughs> Genesis could have, or, or Salvation could have been a good movie. Yeah, Genesis was crap from second one, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. I gotta tell you, I, I I enjoyed Genesis more than Salvation. I, no. I did. Okay. <laughs> For one thing, they brought Arnold back. You know, mm. um, and um, pops. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, pops. <laughs> Take care of my Sarah. Um, <laughs> now there's some, uh, there was some Oscar winners that I wanted to mention because they they weren't on the top grossing movie list. So let me go down here. Um, mm-hmm. Best supporting actor that year went to Jack Palance from City Slickers. Yes, that was the infamous where he was doing his his acceptance speech. He did the push up, the one one arm push one arm push ups. <laughs> yeah, I have hey. never understood. No, I enjoyed City Slickers. Mm-hmm. I saw it. I really enjoyed it. I one of my dad's favorite movies. <laughs> understood why Jack Palance has a career. He is the worst actor ever to step in front of a in, in front of a, a, a you know even in in. Batman, Batman 89 or whatever. 
Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. that's how he always acts. And I've never understood why people like that. He's awful. <laughs> Yeah, I think I in, C- in City Slickers it worked because he was kind of, he was almost playing a parody of himself. Pretty much, you know? yeah. But I remember there was a line. There's a line in City Slickers where uh, he looks at it, and I was 14 when I saw it, and I didn't understand the joke when it happened. Uh, Billy, he looks at Billy Crystal, and he says, "I shit bigger than you." And <laughs> and I, I looked at my dad's like, "What does that mean?" He's like, "When he goes to the bathroom, it's bigger than Billy Crystal." I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> <laughs> See, actually, in City Slickers, he was more subtle than almost any other role he's ever been in. I remember him in Battlestar Galactica, the original Battlestar Galactica. Oh, that's right. God. He played this prophet named Khalil. Yeah. And it was just, even as a kid, I was like, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> Jack Palance's best performances, especially in in the movies that I saw him in, which is City Slickers and uh, Batman, he dies a third of the way through the movie. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah and then in City Slickers two, yeah, City twin. Slickers two, he's on all, he was all the way through it. Yeah, he played yeah. his own twin. <laughs> I don't think I ever saw City Slickers two. The Legend yeah. of Curly's Gold. Legend yeah, Curly's Gold. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and Best Supporting Actress went to Mercedes Rule from The Fisher King. Which I saw the Fisher King within the last year or so. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, because I had never seen it and it kept coming up on lists of movies that I'm supposed to see because mm-hmm. I like movies. Eh. Eh. Yeah. The only thing well, I remember uh, right. about the Fisher King is Robin Williams naked butt scooting across a park. <laughs> yeah. That was part of it, but he was a homeless guy who uh, there's there's a there's a reason. Oh, I'm, I'm sure there's it's, way more to it than that. That's just the only thing I, I saw it in the theaters at the time it came out. And it's that's the full only of thing I remember about it. Yeah, it's full of people that I love. I mean, I love Jeff Bridges. I love mm-hmm. Robin Williams. Uh, but I don't. It just. And I, I mean, I watched the whole thing. I, I, I about halfway through it, I was like, "Do I really want to finish watching this?" And like, it gets yeah, depressing well. at the end when you find out. Yeah. Uh, well, I can't spoil. <laughs> yeah. Thirty-year-old I mean, movie, but, right, but yeah. I mean, it's, I prefer- it's a good movie. I just don't. The remember. thing about Robin Williams is that he he was good in it because yeah. I I really loved Robin Williams when he wasn't playing these crazy goofy characters and stuff uh when he because he played in some dark movies and I, that i really oh, like like oh, uh, yeah, one, one hour photo. hour photo is oh my god he's yeah amazing, and man. um <laughs> there's another one like the night is it the night talk the night stalker or something like that where he plays he's, a, he's great in insomnia too where that's he plays it that's yeah, yeah that's the one i'm thinking of yeah you ever those seen dreams may come yes yes, yes. Bad, that's depressing <laughs> that's, that's depressing yeah but it's a an- so beautiful movie. Visually stunning. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, there are some movies that I am stunned were not on the uh on, on the lists yet. Uh, well, Thelma and Louise got that, best yeah, original oh, really? screenplay in the top ten. Apparently not. Chick-fil-A. Well, that's just the top ten of top ten money makers. That, I know. I mean, that yeah, but these are the, the Oscar yeah. ones so. of, the, of the year. That yeah, yeah Thelma and Louise is thing. how Brad Pitt got put on the map. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The only thing I don't like about Thelma and Louise, my, and see, my mom loved that movie, and I mean, it may just be because I was a teenager when I saw it, but the the end of it just that's seems like. That's just, a great ending. That's the only way it could have ended. Anything yeah, right. else would have been totally contrived. And it just when seemed they, like they, they did just, that, I don't I know how like, to end this. So <laughs> no, no, there was no other way. To death, but I, there was yeah, no it's... other way that movie could have ended. That wouldn't have been a cheat. That yeah. wouldn't have been a cop out. Agreed. Because hmm. you okay. know, I you know, I am, I'm the 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 happy ending king. I don't like sad endings. I'm a, I don't even remember why I saw Thelma and Louise. I, you know, it's not the kind of movie I would have, I would have normally seen. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I swear, I, I honestly don't remember why I had to have gone to see it with somebody else for that wanted to see it. Um, but when it was getting close to the end and I was like, they have done so much that there is no way this is going to end well. And yeah. then, and I'm I'm not going to spoil it because if you haven't seen this movie yet, you need to. Um, but when they did what they did, 
it was the only way that that movie could have ended satisfactorily. And mm-hmm. they, they had the balls to do it. Yeah. Now, if you've seen Wayne's world, you know what they did. <laughs> yeah. Cause they parodied it. In that. Yeah. <laughs> was it Wayne's world or Wayne's world two? I don't remember. Wayne's world two. It was Wayne's world two. Yeah. yeah. But still, um, yeah, um, it's, it's a great movie and I'm, I'm stunned. It didn't end up in the top 10 money makers, but I hope it, I, I don't remember. Did it take Oscars? Yeah, yeah, it is best original screenplay. Okay, good. Yeah. Is what um, not that Susan Sarandon and Gina Davis didn't deserve more for what they did, but best film was Silence of the Lambs. Best director was Jonathan Dem from Silence of the Lambs. Best actor Anthony Hopkins. Best actress Jodie Foster. Best supporting actor Jack Palance. Best supporting actress Mercedes Rule. Uh, adapted screenplay Silence of the Lambs. Original screenplay Thelma and Louise. Original score, Beauty and the Beast. Original song, Beauty and the Beast. And best foreign language film, Medi- Mediterraneo. Mediterraneo, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, Silence of the Lambs is the last film to date that has won the big five Oscars. Swept the big five, which is picture, actor, actress, director, and screenplay. Also, it is a crime, an absolute crime that Highlander 2 is not in the Oscar list. Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hi- Highlander 2? What, I, I, what? I don't know. I, don't, I, don't, no, I, don't, I, must, I, I must have written something wrong. There's a high, no I know there's a Highlander there. and a Highlander 3. I, I think I, I think that must have meant 3 and I wrote 2 by yeah. mistake. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> um. Okay, so are there any movies that came out in 91 that you guys wanted to make sure got highlighted? Undiscovered oh, Country. Yeah, yeah, there's that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, I didn't, okay, so I didn't see that in the theater, but that was really before I really started watching Star Trek. Mm. Uh, I didn't really get into Star Trek until I think Next Generation was in its third or fourth season before I really started watching and then it made me go back to the original series and the movies and all that kind of stuff so I probably didn't see the undiscovered country until sometime around 95 or something like that you know mm-hmm. but okay. well as a old fart and someone <laughs> who grew up watching TOS long before there was a, a TNG uh, the undiscovered country while I have certain issues with the narrative uh was probably one it was probably the second best TOS movie. Uh you know, after, after Con. Con. yeah. Okay. Um not that I didn't in you know I love the motion picture. Uh you know I didn't at the time. It's it's taken me many years to to learn to appreciate it. Um I think it gets way more flack than it deserves, but I also understand why because I was one of the haters for a long time. Um, Star Trek three is a very uneven film. Uh, Star Trek four, the one with the whales, nobody remembers <laughs> the name, the title of the movie. You just say the one with the whales is a wonderful movie, but I don't think it's, it's a great Star Trek movie. It's a great, let's bring people in who don't like Star Trek movie. And I love it. I'm not, I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not dissing it at all. I, I, you know, I will watch the voyage home anytime at, you know, anytime it's on, but I think the undiscovered country you know, despite the fact that, you know, some of the mystery aspect of it is kind of stupid. Um, I, it was a great send off and Nick Meyer, if you, if you read his book or listen to it now, it's out on audio, uh, the view from the bridge. Uh, he, he was never overly concerned with Canon mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, with treating what had come before as precious or sacred, uh, and while in, so, you know, you could sort of look at that as, as not necessarily a good thing, but in, you know, for Meyer, it really worked. Mm-hmm. You know, you cannot disagree that, that, that Nicholas Meyer saved Star Trek with Wrath of Khan. And a lot of that is because he went, I'm sorry, Gene, I need to make a movie people want to watch. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and actually, if you, if you, if you read his book, he, he, he I think he met Gene Roddenberry once. Um, you know, at that point, Roddenberry was so out of the, uh, of the process. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it, one of the things, you know, one of the things I've learned over the years when people get all bent out of shape about Canon and continuity and stuff, and I'm like, read any interview with Ron Moore 
or Iris Stephen Bear or right. Nicholas Meyer. They don't yeah. care about that stuff. All they care about is making the movie or the TV show they want to make. Yeah. Yep. Um, so Undiscovered Country, I, I, you know, I don't like the the whole we got to find the gravity boots thing because, you know, we've seen for decades that all they, there are little slots in the walls all over the place where they can just shove shit out in space. <laughs> you know? um, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and, and there's there's a million reasons why, you know, but but Nick Meyer also was a, a Sherlock Holmes fan and he mm-hmm. even wrote a Sherlock Holmes book called The Seven Percent Solution that became a movie. Uh, so he wanted to, he wanted to put a, you know, create kind of a Sherlock Holmes ish mystery on the enterprise. Uh, and then he, you know, he was trying to do so, you know, Star Trek has always reflected current events and, you know, modern problems. And so the Soviet Union had recently fallen. And so that was the whole Praxis thing, which again was kind of bullshit. Cause why would an entire empire rely on one moon? But, you know, <laughs> Once you get past that kind of stuff, which it took me years to do, it's a fun movie, and it mm. really wraps up the the uh, the 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 original cast's involvement really well and really lovingly, without abusing anyone like Star Trek. Um, <laughs> and I thought it was a, it was a really nice send off for the original cast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I think I said a minute, a minute ago that it was ninety five when I saw it, but that can't be right because Generations came out in ninety four, so yeah, it was more like ninety two, ninety three when I saw this. But uh, okay. yeah, um, the only thing I don't like about Star Trek Six is just the 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 ending. It, it's like they um, they wrap it up so quick. It's like we're in the climax, and then all of a sudden, there's we're actually two space. We've There's got to actually, get to Earth. We got to get to this one specific room know, on Earth, yeah. and then we run in at the last it's, second. It's actually, There's two it's, versions it's, of the ending, actually. Not on Earth. It's at K- Camp Kittimer. It's okay, at Camp yeah, Kittimer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is referenced later in TNG. But, um... Yeah. Yeah, the, there's two versions. The first version is just the you know the Klingons there. He has a sniper rifle, blah blah blah. The TV version has they find uh, uh, Michael Dorn's character and like one other person go up and actually find the guy after he's been shot and they're like oh, it's not Klingon blood it's red and it's Rene Obersonwa in a yeah. in a mask there was there was a much more elaborate federation conspiracy that was edited for the theatrical release and uh, was put back in for the for the TV for the TV release. version it yeah. on the DVD. Mm-hmm. I, I'm I was actually kind of glad they cut that stuff out because me too it it didn't it didn't work for Star Trek. I'm glad yeah. they got rid of the pink blood in the Klingons because oh, you know what? Was... It, it... Klingons bleed Pepto Bismol. <laughs> yeah, that was it, it, Meyer didn't know they were going to do that, and by the time he saw it, it was too late to do anything about it. Uh, I, that was that's my only complaint about it is the Pepto Bismol blood. Yeah, thing. There, there, there was a there's a you know a, 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 an urban legend going around that they did that to avoid an R rating, and that's not true. It was just no, it, it was, was it was a design decision that that yeah. Meyer didn't know, and by the time he saw it, it was too late to do anything about it. You gotta have a lot more blood than that to get an R rating just for blood. Right. <laughs> not 1991. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. Um, Jim, what about you? You got any you want to throw in? Well, I got a few, but I'll just go with one for right now. Point Break. Oh yeah. Yeah, I love Point Break. That's um, the original. Uh, uh, not yeah, crazy, but the remake, crazy, right? The, the surfer movie that they were bu- yeah. robbing banks. Yeah, I've only ever seen the scene where they jump out of a plane, and one of them doesn't have a parachute. Speaking of Catherine Bigelow, she directed it. That was her first major yeah. film. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles two: The Secret of the Ooze, which was more corny than the first one. Oh well, yeah, yeah. They they really played into so the the first one was based more on the comics, yep. With aspects of the cartoon put in because they knew kids that watched the cartoon were coming to see this movie. Um, but the second one was more car- more of the cartoon. Mm-hmm. Um, but it. I mean, but you know, I was a, I was a kid when I saw these movies. <laughs> uh. But yeah, I, I, I think that the um, I have a nostalgia for those movies just because the way that they they're practical. They 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 did everything pra- with uh, practical uh, effects, robotics mm-hmm. and things like that, and not 
Turn all away. CGI and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and the second one had Ernie Reyes Jr. in it, which I had seen him in. I can't remember the name of it, but there was a karate movie that came on Disney. Um, the Mickey Mouse Club used to do this thing called the, like the five minute movie or something where on Monday, Wednesday and Friday, if you watch the Mickey Mouse Club, they would show five minutes of a movie and you had to come back the next time to watch the next five minutes. And and they mm-hmm. did that until they had shown the whole thing. And one of them was a karate movie with Ernie Reyes Jr. And he had played he had been the guy in the Donatello suit in the first movie. Hmm. And the, the second movie, they actually let him be there because he's, the he's a black one, belt. Was that the one where they went to feudal Japan or was that the third? No, one? this is the one where they, where they got the, uh, where the uh, goo had come from that turned them into, into humanoids and all that kind of stuff. The third one was I the one I where they it, went but I don't remember inside. anything about it. Yeah. I just and remember she, Vanilla the Ice was in it. Yeah. yeah. Ice yeah. Was <laughs> that may be why I don't remember. <laughs> And he still references that. If you look at his uh, Twitter, you know he's got videos on there where he's he's singing the Go Ninja song and all that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> go Ninja, Go Ninja, Go Ninja, Go. Uh, and also, an, another one that's kind of uh, fun to watch is uh, Backdraft. Oh, that's a good movie. I enjoyed that movie a lot. Yeah, and see, my dad was a firefighter when I was growing up, so mm-hmm. he loved this movie, but. He used to. <laughs> he Kurt would. Russell, uh, right? uh, what? Kurt Russell was in there, right? Yeah, Kurt Russell. Yeah. Um, we would watch it, which it was rated R, so it was one of the first R-rated movies that I saw. Uh, That's my brother, goddamn it! Um, <laughs> hey, we would watch it, and there's a scene towards the end where Kurt Russell is running through this fire, and his coat is just wide open. Oh yeah, and, and my and my dad says that's a dead firefighter right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's a reason they put those buttons on that coat. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, another one that I right. remember was Double Impact. Do you remember Double Impact? That came out that uh, year. Van Dam. That was Van Dam playing yeah. two parts. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, one of my all-time favorite movies that didn't get any love but i love it and i've seen it dozens of times la story that's a good movie oh was steve steve martin steve martin sarah jessica parker uh um oh the redhead from taxi why can't i think of her name um anyway mary lou mary lou henner thank you yeah there you go yeah um it is you know i've never been to la so there's probably a lot of a lot of the humor I don't get, but it is such a sweet. It's it's like a modern fairy tale is how I've been mm-hmm. describing it for the last mm-hmm. th- thirty years. Um, Steve Martin plays a wacky weatherman who <laughs> up and loses. Sorry, screws up and loses his job, uh, and then he meets uh, this English woman who I, I can't think of her name offhand, uh, but they were married for a while, so this was kind of like you know. Two, two stars get married and then, you know, they make a movie together. Uh, but it's such a wonderful, magical, bizarre comedy love story. Um, and the, 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 that, you, know, you see, are you are, Ruach? That's not Ruach. That's are you OK? Because OK, a big part of the movie is there's a you know how how you've got those those road signs you know big road signs on the freeway that that like send messages like mm-hmm. you know crash ad or something like that yeah they only just recently got to florida uh but i guess they were a, a thing in la 20, 30 years ago and he like has a relationship with one where it's like giving him advice and stuff oh that's right oh yeah um, and like the first thing it says to him is ruach and he's like ruach and it says don't make me waste letters are you okay (laughs) and it's it's such a sweet movie and it's so bizarre but in a wonderful way and the ending just it just melts your heart yeah (laughs) it's a wonderful film and i have shown so many people this movie and i've never had anyone go well that sucked (laughs) (laughs) And there, uh, there's this great little cameo in the middle of it with Rick Moranis, uh, uh-huh. 
which is a, a you know kind of the 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 Hamlet gravedigger scene. Um, it's just it's a wonderful, sweet, harmless, heartwarming. Give a tear, you know, have a tear in your eye at the end movie that everybody needs to see. Yeah. yeah. Um, Oliver Stone actually made two movies that year because he also made The Doors. Oh, yeah. With oh. Uh, um, Val, Val Kilmer, Kilmer playing uh, Jim Morrison, which Val Kilmer was uh, the spitting image no. of Jim Morrison in that movie. No. No, if you wasn't. look at the poster, if you look at the poster, well, at the of, poster, yeah, but I don't he think looks he looks exactly anything. like him. No, well, I don't think he looks anything like him. Um, but I, I and I didn't see this movie for several years after it came out. I was uh, a moody teenager that uh, uh, I listened to the Doors and watched this movie, and and it was just uh, I don't know I, I don't know what it was about this movie that I liked because I really don't like Oliver Stone movies that much, <laughs> but uh, but this one I did I did like. Um, okay. But also you know, uh, Ray Manzarek came out about the time that the movie came out and was like upset because the movie was more about Jim Morrison than it was the rest of them. I'm like, yeah, because that's the one that everybody wants to. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one everybody remembers. Nobody wants to go see the Ray Manzarek movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I couldn't tell you anyone else in the doors, but but Jim Morrison. Uh, Ray Manzarek. Yeah. Robbie, yeah. Robbie Krieger actually performed at uh, one of my favorite performances is um, at Woodstock 99. He was um, one of my favorite bands when I was a teenager was uh, or teenager, young adult. 99, I was in my 20s by then. But uh, one of my favorite bands is Creed. And oh, they God. Okay. and they performed at, <laughs> and they performed at uh, Woodstock '99 and Robbie Krieger uh, came up and played guitar with them. So okay, we're cool. long. I, I we're like a open. lot of Doors songs, but like if you ever watch any video of the Doors, oh yeah, Weird. and Jim Morrison actually opens his eyes, there is nothing there. <laughs> well, he was except, stoned all the time, except heroin. He, no, he was beyond stone. That, I mean, I I know stoners and. There's flickers of light in their eyes. That was just if he when he actually opened his eyes, it was like looking into the abyss. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, right. Yeah, he checked that a long time ago. Uh, okay. And then, also, also, um, I want to throw this one out there: uh, okay. Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Yeah. Ninety ninety one was big for sequels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the other Keanu movie that came out that year. But it gets a bad rap. People think of it as like a lesser than. But Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey is actually just as good as the first one. Yeah. It's just not. I mean, it's not as much time travel and more kind of existential after death kind of stuff. You know. It's, and, yeah. Hell, and like, dude, it's just like the album cover. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it had William Shadler playing the the Grim Reaper, and he was a, mm -hmm. he was awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they and, be. <laughs> yeah, I love it and they, because they brought him back for the the new one. The new one, yeah. Year. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, no, yeah. it's great. I haven't seen it yet. It mostly references the first movie, but it, yeah. Oh, there's they, they a lot bring, of the second one in there too. But they yeah. brought back William Sadler to play the Grim Reaper. Yeah, I, I knew that. I liked him better as the Reaper than as uh, uh, Section Thirty One. Oh, the guy in the the Die Hard sequel. <laughs> oh no 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 not that the, the, the yeah. doing the, his uh, naked yoga or whatever. <laughs> yeah. He was actually doing Tai Chi, but yeah, yeah Tai Chi, yeah. Uh, right. Let's see another underrated film that I love to death, and it just never gotten the love it deserves. The Rocketeer. Yeah, you know, I only saw that for the first time in the in in the past ten years. And uh, it, it wasn't bad. That movie made me fall in love with Jennifer Connelly. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I didn't need any help in that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the Rocketeer. Well, and I, I think they're going to remake the Rocketeer. I think they're well, going to remake. Well, in Labyrinth, she was like fourteen. Yeah, okay. she, she was, yeah, she was way. Um, but she did a movie where they were like locked in a Walmart overnight or something like that. Oh, mall rats? No, wait, no, 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 no. no, no I know no, what no, you're talking about. Kind of I know good. what you're talking about. Um, but that's when I was like, because she spent most of it in like this really tight tank top. Oh, like, she was like top, maybe like, seventeen in that. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know you had them. <laughs> <laughs> but at least in the Rocketeer, she was an adult. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
and she was gorgeous. So yeah. <laughs> now I would now in all fairness, lest lest you all think I'm totally creepy, I think I'm pretty close to the same age as she is. So God, she's fifty. She is not oh, 50 at all. I'm, I'm, I'm closer to her than, age than you okay. are. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't creep on her in Labyrinth. It wasn't until later when they started. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Well, what year did Labyrinth come out? 84, 85, uh, something like that. Yeah, so she was... Yeah, she was a teenager in that. Like, okay. you know, actual teenager. Yeah, no, I, I didn't even remotely... It was already creepy enough with with David. She was Bowie sixteen. Yeah, yeah, she was she, yeah. she was sixteen. It wasn't until that yeah. that whatever <laughs> that movie was when it was like, oh, okay, I probably shouldn't be <laughs> looking at that. Uh, okay, uh, a, a movie I want to I want to. Okay, this is not a movie anyone should ever see, but I like, and I'm not sure why. It's called Nothing But Trouble with Dan yeah. Aykroyd. Yeah, it's a weird it's film. It's a very, very disturbing film. It is. <laughs> and but it, it it just it hit me at just the right time. It's like it's kind of like Scooby Doo, but in a very bad way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got this, and I haven't seen it in you know probably twenty years, so I I, I don't remember exactly the you know it, you've got it, it's a group of people, maybe a family, that they they like break down in this small town and end up at this house where Dan Aykroyd is like this, the, the old guy that runs the house and they like fall down trap doors and they're yeah, it's weird. <laughs> it, it's really, 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 really weird. And at one point his nose is a penis. It, 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 I, <laughs> I cannot, exp- I cannot in any way recommend this film, but I felt it necessary to mention it because it came out in 91. Um, if you like really twisted, weird kind of sick comedy, check out nothing but trouble but if you don't like really twisted sick weird comedy stay very far away from it you know what i like about dan Aykroyd is that he just makes the stuff that he wants to make he doesn't care if it makes money or not because he he would rather he would rather sit at home and write books about ghosts than uh (laughs) than make uh than make anything else anyway so and so when oh, he wow. makes something, it's just what he wants to do anyway. Well, so. I am mistaken. There were three Keanu movies that year. My my own Private Idaho also came out in ninety one. Um, two that more was, that I wanted. Uh, well, sorry, that was no. Uh, go ahead. That was Keanu and River Phoenix. Uh, that was one of Rivers, unfortunately, one of his last films. But they were mm-hmm. male prostitutes, and Keanu's character was gay, and I think Rivers' character was bi. And they go on a road trip together. It's it's actually not bad. So, um, two more that I wanted to throw out: um, Never Ending Story Two, the next. No, chapter. no, 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 I, no. I've seen it once, and when I have it, too, when it came and that's out, it. No, uh, but I, I I throw it out just because Jonathan Brandis was in it, and Jonathan Brandis isn't with us anymore. You know, yeah, so um, yeah. and and back then, you know. Uh, I think I was close to his age or whatever. So uh, he was in a lot of he was movies. A sequest and stuff. Yeah. He, he, what was the Rodney Dangerfield movie that he was in where Rodney Dangerfield went back to college? No, back to was he in that? I don't think he was in that. No, no, no. He was in Ladybugs. He was in Ladybugs. That's Ladybugs, right. he was, yeah. He, he was yeah, the, the one where he was he had playing girl soccer or whatever. To, to, uh, to play soccer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he was also in the TV movie of. Um, it he was in that was he in that was he yep. in that mm-hmm. okay played one of the kids yeah yeah um but yeah. well see the ne- the never ending story is one of those movies from when i was a, a kid kid you know because it came out in like 83 or something when i was five or six years old something like that and um and it's one of those movies that i saw over and over and over and it's it's ingrained in my brain that's rick when you talk about labyrinth i'm with never new story the way you are with labyrinth it's just yeah. um and then um when the second one came out i was like oh all oh, right and it wasn't it well, was it was it's like a sequel with oh we gotta hit it's we gotta the hit all the half same of the bo- well they tried to do the second half of the book because the first movie is only the first half of the book yeah and it's, it's like we gotta hit all the same beat half. let's hit all the same beats because they, they like this in the first one, so let's do it again. And then the 
third one came out. No, and no, it no. Was, there is no third movie. No, there the, is no third the movie. The third one is just like... <laughs> It has nothing to do with the book at all. It's like a Jim Henson movie, so they're like oh, Muppet. It, they they uh, almost seem like Muppets and stuff. It's, it's like, awful. It's uh, no, there is no third, never any third movie. <laughs> That's all I gotta and, say. And then I want to throw out uh, this because it's one of my mom's favorite movies: um, Fried Green Tomatoes. Oh well, that was such a chick movie. That was oh. because yeah, it was. I uh, know of it, but I never saw it. There was a, a a woman that used to be on the news here in Birmingham. She was one of the newscasters, and uh, it was Fanny Flag. And she oh I left her in game shows in the old days. Yeah, she left. She left doing the news to go be a writer, and she wrote the novel Fried oh, Green Tomatoes, and they okay. they based the movie on that. And actually, the Whistle Stop Cafe that's in this movie is based on a restaurant that used to be in Birmingham. I think it's closed now, but it was called the whistle stop cafe, but, um, but it's, yeah. Yeah. Jessica Tandy and Kathy Bay. It's a great movie. Um, yeah. I mean, that best line in that movie is like, face it girls. I'm older and I have more insurance. <laughs> yeah. She just <laughs> ran met, over that car. I met Jessica Tandy too. Oh, nice. did you? <laughs> yeah. My, my, un, when I was an undergrad, um, the FAU where I, where I was a student, they used to bring in, uh, uh, what did they call them? Eminent scholars, something like that. And one year they had Hume Cronin and Jessica Tandy, you know, they were, they were married. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if you remember the movie, uh, uh, Batteries, Batteries not, included. not included. Yeah. It was that <laughs> yeah. year. The, yeah. the year that came out was when they, when they were there and, you know, they were working with the acting students. I was a technician. I was, you know, I was studying scenery and set design, lighting design, all that stuff. So we didn't really, I didn't really get to interact with them all that often, but they did, they, they had one class uh, where everybody was invited and she was, she was talking and she was so mesmerizing. And at one point I was sitting in the front row and at one point she came over and just like put her hands on my shoulder. And I, I, I was, I wasn't even talking to me. I was just sort of a prop. She just, and, and it was just like, she touched me. <laughs> <laughs> she was just so vibrant. And, uh, and, and, you know, both she and Hume were, were, you know, they were, they were in their seventies at this point and they were still just incredibly energetic and amazing people. Yeah. I think he passed away shortly after they filmed. Yeah. They, they, really. yeah and she just died. Not she, too uh, terribly she, long ago. Yeah, it's it's been within the last few years, yeah. Yeah. Y'all yeah. got then, any more you want to throw out? One more I want to throw out there. Um, Richard Dreyfus and Bill Murray. What about Bob? I never saw yeah. that movie. <laughs> yeah. And that yeah, was one movie. that's also one of my dad's favorite movies. <laughs> I don't yeah. know why I can't remember why I watched it because it is not in any way a film I would watch now, but uh, Richard Dreyfus is a is a, a a psychologist or a psychiatrist. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. And Bill Murray is his patient Bob, mm -hmm. who is so dependent on Dreyfus that Dreyfus is like, "I'm going on vacation," and then Bob proceeds to ruin his vacation by following him and pestering him and stuff. And it's it's just you know, if you ex if you describe this movie to me today, I would be like, "There is no effing way I'm going to watch that film." Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I watched it and I loved it, and it's okay. I, you know, and, and, and I haven't seen it since 1991, so I can't say how well it holds up, but it it was just tons of fun in a very cringy sort of way. There's a scene that stands out that I still remember where uh, Bill Murray as Bob is just taking a walk down this country road, <laughs> but he keeps looking behind him like, what do I do when a car comes? And then the car starts coming and it doesn't even occur to him to step to the side of the road. He just starts <laughs> running down the road as if the car is going to run over him if he doesn't outrun it. So, okay. Um, that reminds me, Richard Dreyfus and Chevy Chase have a movie on Netflix that I watched the other day. It came out in 2019, but it's called The Last Laugh. It's pretty funny. If uh, Richard Dreyfus is like this guy that used to be a comedian, mm -hmm. but now he's in a nursing home. And Chevy Chase used to be his manager. And then he winds up in the same nursing home and they end up going back on tour together. So okay. uh, it's, it's pretty good. Okay. Uh, 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 Jen, you have any more you want to throw out? Yeah, a few. Okay. Uh, Prince of Tides. Yeah. Uh, that was, 
Bo Babs, and that was uh, she was the first uh, female director to win a Golden Globe for Best Director. Was for Prince of Tides. Um, let's see, Bugsy. Remember when that came out? That was ninety one. That was uh, Net Warren Beatty doing. Yeah, yeah. That's how he met Annette Benning and married her in real life. My girl with the saddest ending ever. Oh God, yes. <laughs> That's that's one of those movies that it's a good movie, but the last ten minutes of it just completely wrecks you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the Butcher's Wife. That was that weird one where Demi Moore had blonde hair in it and somehow fell in love with Jeff Daniels. Not like that would ever happen in real life. Um, Hudson Hawk. That's one of my husband's favorite movies of all time. That was That's, uh, uh, Bruce Willis, right? Bruce Willis, yeah. That was. Oh god, weird... that movie is awful. <laughs> he loves that movie to death. I swear, he loves that movie. A uh, Dead Again, which was. Um, oh, Ken, was that that ran on Emma Ken Thompson? Brennan and Emma Thompson. Oh, that movie! I forgot about that. That is awesome. I love that movie so much because <laughs> the is... twist is so great. Yes. It, it, oh yes, yes. Dead Again is an amazing movie. I. Totally forgot about that movie. Yep. And um, uh, let's see. Last one I have is you already did Backdraft. Uh, there was one other one. Oh, remember Oscar, that really bad uh, Sly Stallone movie where he was a gangster? I remember Oscar, <laughs> that really good Sly Stallone movie that went where he was a gangster. <laughs> We're bakers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember Oscar lives in a trash can on Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was it was supposed to be his, his first time doing comedy, and it was essentially he was a gangster, and they were trying to reform and become bakers. So that yeah. was a whole running gag. He went through a whole bank. thing where he was trying to not be the, he's trying to not be Rocky anymore. And yeah. that's when he made like stop or my mom will shoot uh, and stuff like that. But uh, Oscar's a good movie. Uh, yeah. It it's has funny. Been uh, one of Tim Curry's better roles. <laughs> King Ralph came out in 91. It had yeah. uh, uh, John, John uh, Goodman where <laughs> it's the stupidest plot or premise to a movie the entire royal family gets killed at the same time and the and the next in line to take the throne is john goodman <laughs> yeah this guy in america like yeah, yeah. um what well, there was there was another one that came up that i wanted to mention oh the bride of reanimator if you like the reanimator movies, that's uh, that's I yeah, mean, I Jeffrey saw the, Combs. I saw the first one, but I never saw that one. Jeffrey Combs, um, being Jeffrey Combs, you know, so. well, yeah. <laughs> defending your life came out that year with Albert Brooks and uh, Meryl Streep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a decent movie, too. Oh, yeah, Drop but, Dead Fred. Remember that movie? <laughs> I've, yeah, I've, we've got we've gotten to the point where we're just naming movies and saying remember that. So I think well, no, no, no. Well, Drop Dead Fred was the Phoebe case, and uh, that was the one where it was the imaginary friend who kept following her around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. The only thing I've ever seen with Phoebe Cates in it was uh, uh, Fast probably Times. Fast Fun Times and oh, you saw Gremlins. Well, you saw Gremlins. Oh She's right. Oh right. Okay. Yeah, but she didn't. Never mind. <laughs> Oh, uh, the, the pool scene. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right. That does it for our celebration of 30 year old films. We're going to continue this discussion later, the, probably this summer. We'll come back and visit the year 90, 1996 for a uh, 25 year reunion. But uh, between now and then, we have other things to talk about. So until then, I'd like to thank everyone on the panel. Jen, thank you for being here tonight. Yeah, thank you for having me as always. Um, Rick, thank you for being here as well. My pleasure. Thank you. And uh, everybody, don't forget our, uh, about our Patreon. Our our last, our latest uh, patrons, um, patrons only episode is up now, and it's a video. It's us watching Plan Nine from Outer Space and commenting on it. So go to patreoncom slash potato if you want to watch that. And we're uh, a and lot you can, more entertaining than that movie. <laughs> <laughs> and you can actually, in the video, you can see the movie along with us, so you don't have to like watch it separately or anything. Um, and yeah, be, uh, consider becoming a patron because it helps us with the cost of bandwidth and streaming and stuff like that. And so, other than that, 
uh, pay attention at the end. If you're listening to the podcast at the end, uh, Brock will tell you where you can find us. If you're watching on YouTube, then just uh, click on the link below and uh, you'll find our website. That'll and do remember, it. Remember, there is a Patreon level where I will come to your house and wash your car. <laughs> There's a Patreon level where I'll come to your house and paint your house. <laughs> I don't know what it is, and I'm not sure if you'd want me to paint your house because I've never painted a house before. I have, but <laughs> <laughs> I have too. <laughs> all right, thank you all for listening to the show. Be sure to join us next time on that Super Fan Talk podcast when you might hear somebody say something. But John's not here, so good night. <laughs>